it is, what it's for, what's using it. Um, we're going to look at how to download the add-in, um, how to export and import master data, customer product suppliers, and then there's a number of other objects that the power accounting add-in can deal with. So we're looking at purchase invoices, sales, sales book entry, sales invoices, uh, cash receipts. Um, we're going to look at uh, bank payments, talk about that, data validation, um, and error handling and messages. So there's a number of features that the add-in gives us in terms of making sure the data that you um, retrieve from Bigger Cloud and send back to Bigger Cloud are correct and accurate. Um, we'll have a Q&A session as well. If you look at your panel within, uh, we're using GoToWebinar today, so uh, bear with us while we learn it. Um, we think it's a good tool, but it's our first time using it for a webinar like this. And um, There is a questions area in the middle, so if you have any questions, please put them into the questions area. Um, there are a number of staff members here on the call also today who will be helping while I'm presenting the, um, the Power Accounting add-in overview. They will be answering questions. If there's any questions that don't get answered or can't be answered, we'll certainly follow up with you after on an email. Um, so um, let's move on to our next slide. So just a quick um, overview of the add-in. We will get into a demo very shortly, uh, but just to give you a background uh, for what we're doing here first. So the add-in is a live link to Excel um, that links directly to bigger cloud company data. So think of it as a two-way connector between your data in the cloud Guys, a polish and add in to make sure that the data you put and try to enter back to Bigger Cloud is correct and is validated. Um, we also have error handling messages. So, so if you do put in some incorrect data in the system, uh, the add in will actually deal with that and let you know what's happening. Um, we will have a QA session at the end as well. Um, there is an area in the middle of the screen for questions. So if you would use that during the, um, during the presentation for any questions that you may have. Um, we have a number of staff members on hand here to answer them during the session, and if there's anything not answered, we'll certainly follow up afterwards by email uh, with any questions that, that, that you guys want answered. So let's start with a quick discussion uh, and an overview of the add-in itself. Um, it is a live link between Excel and Bigger Cloud Company data. It's developed as an add-in within Excel, and it's available within the Microsoft Office Store. It is free of charge, so that's good for our customers as well. We're included as part of the functionality once you have a live Bigger Cloud subscription. Um, there is a version requirement. Uh, it needs to be Excel 2013 Service Pack 1 or later, or the newer version of Excel 2016, uh, because we're using some of the newer technologies, uh, being able to connect to data between Cloud and, and Excel itself. Um, it's important to realize it is a two-way connection. It's bringing data from Bigger Cloud into Excel, and it is also going to send information from Excel back to Bigger Cloud also. Um, it appears as a side panel in Excel, which is where all of the add-ins add, or there are a number of other add-ins in the marketplace as well, um, and we'll see it in a, in a demo in a minute. Um, and there is a, a number of data and error checking features included to make sure we keep you safe in terms of the um, in, in terms of the data you send back to make sure it's as accurate as possible. Um, so next we're going to look at um, installing and configuring the Bigger Cloud Power Account the add-in. So it's available within the store menu in Excel. We'll jump into a, uh, into a demo in a second. Um, and then we'll look at how to get your API key from Bigger Cloud. Um, and we'll look at the first time login experience and saving your password. So let's end the presentation for a second and we'll jump into demo mode. And let's start here. So I'm opening my version of Excel. I'm using Excel 2016, but as I said, it needs to be Excel 2013 Service Pack 1 or later. On my Insert button on Excel, there is a newer um, option for Store. Click on the Store option. 
and you can either look at existing add-ins if you have them, or you can search the store for popular add-ins. You see there's a number of other third-party and Microsoft-based uh, uh, add-ins here also, so I'm going to search for Big Red Cloud. Hit return, and we now have the Big Red Cloud Power Accounting add-in, so we have information on it here, and you can click on Add to get it. Click on Add. And that will now install the Power Accounting add-in as a side panel over here on your Excel, um, on your, in your Excel application. Um, the first piece of this is you do need to use a specific template, a specific Excel template, because it needs to know about the various objects like purchase, sales, customers, and so on that we have in Bigger Cloud. So the first task is to download the template. So let me download the template. We're going to save this as Excel template here. Save it. I will open it just to go through the first time experience of using the Power Accounting add-in template. Uh, once we open the template, the add-in will recognize that we have a template open. Um, we may need to enable editing up here first to trust this file the first time we open it and enable content. So at this point, we are required to connect the spreadsheet securely to our Bigger Cloud system. So to do that, we need what's called an API key, an application programming interface key. It's really a username and a password combined into one um, into one thing. So let's switch over to Big Red Cloud and see where we get this in Big Red Cloud. So I'm in Big Red Cloud and I'm in my company. So you need to be the administrator and go to administration, U users API, and go to our API keys on the left hand side over here. So to generate a new API key, I already have one here from earlier, but let's go ahead and create a new one and see what that experience is like. Click on add, we call it Power Accounting. API key. It's just a name to remember what this key was used for. Click and save. At this point, it gives you a string like this. You can just simply edit the key, right click on it, and copy it, and then paste it into your template. So let's go back to our template and paste it in here. Right click, paste. So paste in there. It does hide it so you don't see it, just for security purposes. Connect to company and you're now securely connected to your Big Red Cloud company. Let me click on that there, just missed the click. And we're now ready to use the template. Um, to speed things up a little bit, I have a template that I prepared earlier, as I say in all the good cookery shows. So let me open up that one, uh, because I've got some data that I've got from other sources that I'm gonna actually use. So I'm gonna use the Power Accounting template number one, which is this option here. and just reconnect to the company the first time I open it. So every time you go in, you are asked to connect to it. I have the option to save it. You can, if you wish to disconnect um, your your company from your company, you can log out if you do want to send this back to somebody you don't want to have the saved credentials there. So let me go ahead and retrieve data. This, this company has data from 2015, so let me go ahead and get data. So there are three areas here, uh, two main areas actually on the um, on the top of the screen. We can get, get data, which brings data from Bigger Cloud back to the template, and then coming from the template back to Excel. Um, I think we have a second headset on the call if there's some noise there. Maybe some staff member has a, uh, some audio and you might turn it off. Um, okay, apologies. So click and get data. I do need to click on the yes here to confirm that I do want to retrieve data from Big Red Cloud. So you'll see straight away I have retrieved data. So just to compare this with my Big Red Cloud system, let me go back to Big Red Cloud and log into this company, which is my consulting services, consulting enterprises company. Click on open. Let's go to look up customers, and these are the same customers I have here. So uh, let's go into, for example, Blogs Enterprises. We can see, uh, view this customer. This is the information here. If we compare that to what's in the spreadsheet, here is my uh, Blogs Enterprises here also. So one of the first things we can do here within the template is let's have a look at changing uh, this. So let me make a change of some data, um, LTD. And before I click Return on this, just notice on the left-hand side, I have an operation and a response column here. This is to control data flow between bigger 
Cloud and Excel, it recognizes any changes. So as soon as I make a change here, it's seen that I've made a change to the customer name, and it says that we need to do an update operation back to Bigger Cloud. So let's do a very simple example first and make a quick change in data from a customer name being changed back to Bigger Cloud. Click and send data. Again, we confirm yes to say we want to do this. Wait for the operation to finish. And if the operation is successful, we have a green message here. I mentioned we have data validation as part of the add-in. So basically, this data was permitted to be done. It was it was valid, so therefore we get green. If we, for example, tried to change a, a customer code and it was an existing code and it was duplicate, we would be told that if we put in a field that was too long, you know, a 50-character field where there should be 40, we would get a data validation message on that also. Uh, let's go back to Bigger Cloud. I just see has that change happened here, so I'll just close out on the screen. And we'll view it again to refresh it. And we now have Blogs Enterprises Limited uh, is being updated here. Uh, so it's a two-way connection. Um, we've sent data from Bigger Cloud down to this template, and then we sent it from the template back up again. Um, that's a very simple example just to get a basic principle in place. But let's say I now have a scenario where I've acquired a new range of customers, and I need to set them all up. And I've been sent a CSV file by, my, um, by this new business division I have. And here I have the customer details here. So I just have the basic code name and address I'm going to copy and paste in. So I'm going to basically very quickly create this series of customers. And just before we begin, I'm going to just filter on COST in this list. So I don't have any customers with that code at the moment in my list of customers. I'm going to take this data. I'm going to right-click copy it. And I'm going to paste it into my template for our customers. Customers, come down here. So we just put it in the right spot, right click, and we paste it in here. So I've now pasted in the data. It's detected to create in the first one. We wanted to create all of these customers. You can just simply double click or drag it down to say, I want to create this range of customers. Um, if I have any other information to add, I can do it here, but let's assume I have this range of customers retrieved from my new business division. I want to send it back to Bigger Cloud. So I click and send data and click yes. Give it a moment to operate, and hopefully we get a lot of green lines here, and we do. So that means that these customers have now been imported directly into Big Red Cloud. Let's move back to Cloud. Come out of suppliers, go into Customers, type in COSC. So now we have all of these customers have been imported into Big Red Cloud very, very quickly and safely also. We've done the data validation to make sure the fields are all good. If you view any of these guys here, so there's Jenny Lawrence, 530 Pearson Drive, and that's her here, 530 Pearson Drive, that's the record there. So that's the information has been transformed from Excel, from a CSV file that I received from a supplier, back going to a, uh, back directly into Bigger Cloud. Okay, so that's master data, and you can do that with suppliers as well. Um, you know, so the, 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 the usability is very similar there. It's the same fields, the same, the same layout. I want to, you know, a direct example in suppliers, it will be pretty much the same type of type of operation. Let's look at transactions which might be of interest also. So, for example, if I now look into sales entries um, or sales invoices, so I've, I have three sales book entries. We do split sales book entries from sales invoices. Those of you who are familiar with Big Red Cloud will know that a sales entry is simply a record of a sale. It just has the total, the VAT, the VAT breakdown, and the analysis category breakdown. Sales invoices, on the other hand, has line items. It's got product codes, so it's a little bit more in terms of what the lines are. Uh, one thing I will do here, actually, to make it more readable, is in my Excel, just use my freeze top row. So as you scroll down, you can retain the heading. So that's just a quick tip in terms of usability where you have more than a page full of transactions. Um, let's go to sales entries and see what we have here. Um, so we have three sales entries in um, these periods here in February, April, and March. So let's add a new one. Um, so uh, I'm going to just do a single entry just to show you what working with it is like on the line by line entry. So I'm going to go to June 2016 and add a sales book entry. So let me in Bigger Cloud first come out here and show you what we have before we begin. So go to my sales book. I'm going to go to June. Okay, so I have no transaction here at the moment in, the, in my sales book. So period is June 2015. So as soon as I put that entry in, I get a create over here, which means it knows I'm going to do a, a new value. So I put it in the date, so it's the 5th of June 2016. 
Uh, the reference will auto-generate. Uh, let's use PlusFlex services, PLU. Uh, one thing to notice here is it, I've mentioned data validation. There is, you'll notice there's a drop-down list here. When we retrieve the data from the system, it will have noticed, it will have, uh, just end that, excuse me. It will have, um, it will have retrieved the list of the customers and will know what the valid customers are. So for example, it knows that these are the available customers. If I type in a customer code that doesn't exist, it's not gonna let you do that in the system. So we have made efforts to protect you from yourself. If you use an invalid code, it's gonna tell you straight away. So let's use PlusFix services, zero one. Put in the details we have on the invoice, um, you know, new sale. Again, at the VAT, it's a, it's a, it's a drop-down of the valid value, so it's domestic other EU, or if you just type D, you just use Excel autocomplete to, to fill in domestic. Let's use a very easy, easy example of, you know, 123 euros at 23% VAT, so my total is 123, my total VAT is, is 23. These are my analysis categories, so I'm going to put it down to expenses, it's 100 euros, it's the net. And then this is the VAT breakdown into the, into the various VAT rates. So it's 100 euros at 23%, so I need to pop it in here. Um, we have a user defined field as well. So if you want to update data with user defined fields, we have a job reference here. We can also use that. So when we retrieve the data from Bigger Cloud, we get your customized VAT rates, analysis categories, and also user defined fields if you have them in use. So let's put Jade 1001 as a job reference. So let's send this back to Bigger Cloud and see does it send the invoice. Send data. Click on yes. And we get a nice green message there indicating we got all that successfully. Um, and let's go into our Big Red Cloud and see what's happened here. So we'll just refresh June by going to July and back to June again. And now we have a sales book entry entered into the month of June. And there it is. Um, if I do make a change here, so we, our change and delete functionality works across all of these systems. So if I change it in Big Red Cloud, um, let's say, actually, that was one, two, three, oh, I got that wrong by a factor of 10. Um, so let's just use a double click here to auto calculate the VAT and we'll put that into expenses. So let's say, actually, that was some consulting as well. So let's say it was 800 and double tap there to do the balance of 200 and click on save. If I now come back to my spreadsheet and get data, it's going to get the corrected values here for my sales book entry. So I now have a sales book entry, 1, 2, 3, 0, 2, 30, and so on. So it's a full two-way connection with the data moving between both between both systems. Um, in terms of data validation here, for example, if I try and make another change here to send back, um, so let's say I change my calculation here to 1,000. So this is clearly incorrect. I've now made the net value VAT about 13.5%, but clearly the rates don't apply. So what's going to happen here? It recognizes as soon as I make a change, it needs to do an update, and it's going to try and send it back to Big Red Cloud. So let's click on Send Data and see what happens. So what you're going to do here is you get a message saying the total VAT does not equal the sum of the VAT based on the allocation of the net amount. So you know straight away you've got an issue with this, you've got to go and correct it. So I go and correct it. It's, it's a thousand there. Let's say, actually, you know what I went to do? I meant to change the breakdown here. This was actually 500 consulting, 200 and three, uh, uh, let's make that another 500 here. So I actually meant to do this change, split the analysis category between IT consulting and expenses as 500 net each one. They're both 23% 23 VAT, but my nominal breakdown is different. Let's try again to send the data and click on yes. and I still have some issue with it. Maybe you can see it, actually I did. I accidentally put 5,000 in there. Okay, sorry about that guys, that was a deliberate mistake, so let's try it again. Slippery fingers with the keyboard, click on get send data, and we'll send it again. And we get a nice green message saying that has been updated. Let's move back to Bigger Cloud. And again, we'll just refresh the page. <coughs> Uh, we now see we have the split between IT consulting and expenses has been done. So it's a full two-way um, application that retrieves data and sends data from one system to another. 
Um, we have a number of objects here. I'm not going to go through each of them individually. You know, we have suppliers and customers from a master data point of view. The same kind of behavior is there. Um, we have sales invoices also. Sales invoices, sales invoices look a little bit different because you have a header line and the detail line that contain the products. And they're just split across the screen over here. Uh, but I'm going to do a further example of an invoice example for purchases. So I've retrieved some purchase invoices. Um, if I move to my purchase invoices for the month of June, um, purchases book, here we are in June. So I have no purchase invoices entered yet, but if somebody has been able to send me the purchase invoices in CSV format, I want to see how I can get them quickly into the system. So I have this file here, but anyway, this tab is the one I entered into the spreadsheet. So whilst these tabs are special, they're the ones where we connect the cloud, there's nothing to stop you having your own individual tabs within the spreadsheet where you do your own workings. Uh, so in this case, I have a purchase workings where I've got some purchase invoice data. Um, Enter that here. So I have um, five purchase invoices that I've prepared here in Excel. Maybe I got these in the file. Maybe I've exported them from somewhere else. Um, I've, I've got them from different places, but I now have the data ready to go into Bigger Cloud. It's important to have it in the same shape. So I have the analysis category breakdown there, and I also have the net analysis breakdown here. Um, by the way, just the date formats. Uh, the date needs to be um, formatted as month slash the year, and then the, the date is normal uh, date format. To do that in Excel, if you are working with Excel, it's just a matter of right-click, Format Cells, and you can form the cell as custom, mm slash yyyy, just if you are doing um, preparation of that. But if you have any questions about preparing the data to be correctly recognized by the data loader, by the by the power counting add-in, uh, just, just talk to any of our support staff. Or if you have a question on it, uh, please feel free to use the question in the uh, in, in your uh, GoToWebinar panel. That's uh, so, okay, so I'm just simply going to copy and paste by highlighting this range. Uh, so highlight that block of data, go to my purchases, Support. We get this to the right spot, so we do it just here at the date, or sorry, the period. So right click. Um, I do recommend doing a paste values, which means if you have any formulas or any kind of, you know, any unusual items like that in your source data, it just gets clean, gets in, in, inserted as clean text here. Um, again, just copy the create down by just double tapping on the bottom right corner. And now I'm going to create, hopefully create five invoices into the purchases area. So let's click on send data. Click on yes, and we have five successful messages um, that these transactions were created. So if I go to my Big Red Cloud, back here to July, back to June, so there's my purchase invoices have been successfully imported into my Big Red Cloud. Double click any one of them and you see all of the information is there. There was purchase not for resale, that was an analyze the stationery and my VAT breakdown is there also. Okay. So let me move back to my spreadsheet. Okay. So that's one way of importing bulk data from uh, external sources, be it from an, another invoicing system, be it from another purchase management system, or from any other data that you might have. You know, maybe you've got acquired a range of customers, you can put, you can put it in here. Uh, let me use one last demo to show I had to enter a sales invoice. I said that was split across two. So that does look a slightly different. So let me just go ahead. I will enter an invoice here. So the key is to put in the data starting with your period. Uh, let's use, um, June again, 2015. So as soon as I put that in, I get the create option over here. So first, 6, 2015. So we'll use the blogs. We just use a bit of autocomplete just to help us with it. So domestic is the domestic VAT rate. Uh, LO is the, that's the layout type for the invoice or generally generally type one. So that's the main header information. Um, down here we put in the product information. So on the next line we can put in. Um, let me put a di. I'll just use a bit of cheating here to copy and copy these data. But obviously if you had this in a in a file you would you would obviously do that. So you want to put the quantity. So I wanted to put two. At five euros, the VAT rate is going to be 
again, there's a validation there to make sure you can only pick valid VAT rates. So if I did put in something oddball, it would do that. So the amount is the total amount. So that's 12.30. And the VAT amount is 2.3. Okay, so we now we need to split the net between I between our various analysis categories and I put it all to um, IT consultancy in this case. So again, we've got our job reference here if we need it also. Uh, for now, let's just go, go ahead and send that invoice. So I've moved down to the bottom of the page. So there's my invoice created. If I go into um, June in Big Red Cloud to my sales book. Let's go to June. So there's my Bugs Enterprise, my invoice. Let me just open it up here. <clears throat> so there's my two items at five euros each, value of 23%, total amount to 1230, uh, total on the invoice. So that's the sales invoice. And again, I can make a change here and send it over and back from book to cloud. Um, okay, so I'm not sure if you have any questions. That concludes my overview of the, um, of the transaction data entry. There are other objects available. Um, so for example, we have purchases, purchases, cash receipts. We do have bank payments coming very shortly. It's not in the current version, but expect to see that very soon, probably within the next week. Um, does anybody have any questions? I'm not seeing questions on the list unless our guys have any questions. Okay, we had allocated some time for questions. So if there's no questions, we'll um, probably close up the webinar shortly, but I might just, we might just leave it open for a minute. If you, if you do have any questions on it, uh, maybe just find the questions area in your GoToWebinar panel, uh, send them and we'll, uh, we'll do our best to answer. I'll just mute for a second and just, until we see if there's any questions. Okay, so we seem to have some questions here now. Thanks, guys. Uh, so uh, let me just get my panel. Okay, so somebody's asked, am I able to move my data from bigger book to bigger cloud using this? And the answer is uh, yes, to some degree. Uh, the data obviously is in a very similar shape to what it is in uh, bigger book. So you could use it just to get some of the data prepared. Uh, bear in mind, we don't yet have, we don't have all the obvious. We don't have debtors journals, creditors journals. Uh, we don't have bank payments yet, although we will have soon. In terms of moving the data, it won't do things like understand if something has been allocated or unpaid or not. So yeah, you can certainly export information from Bigger Book and import it into Bigger Cloud, but be understanding that you would need to do some work with it and understand what you're getting. So thanks for that question. Okay, so we have another question from Vivian with cash payments. Yes, we, we intend on taking all the, um, on all the obvious that, that are there over time. So we had a cash receipts about two weeks ago. We're going to add bank payments uh, next week and cash payments will come also. So thanks for the question. Any other, any, anybody else have any questions that they want to answer, ask? We might give it another minute just to see if anybody is, um, has a question that they'd like to ask. Okay, guys, that seems to be the end of the questions. Um, appreciate the feedback. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this presentation. Um, we will be making this presentation available afterwards. If there's any questions, please feel free to follow up by email, uh, email support at biggercloud.com or info at biggercloud.com uh, or reach out to any of the team by phone. We're here to help. Uh, thanks for your time today. Appreciate you taking your time for the afternoon. Uh, and uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, guys. Goodbye.